Hi, I'm Jared Younger, Director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory at UAB, and this is continuing our series of short videos about exciting things that are happening in the laboratory and exciting things that are happening in other laboratories as well. Today I want to do something that I've promised people I would do for quite some time now, and that is post a list of medications for ME-CFS or chronic fatigue syndrome that I discussed with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention a little while ago. So probably about two months ago, we had a teleconference with the CDC, and I discussed the scientific literature about treating ME-CFS. Now that teleconference was not recorded, so people have asked me to at least post a list of the medications that I discussed so they could, they could see that list. So I'm going to do that today. Now I'm not going to redo the talk. So this will be a shortened version, but I will display the list and I will go over the major categories and give a couple of notes about those. So you have a little bit of information. Then maybe at a later date, I'll do an updated version of the full talk. Now, a few restrictions. I only discussed treatments for ME-CFS, not ME-CFS plus something else like arthritis or multiple sclerosis or fibromyalgia. Uh, so only looking at fatigue. I only discussed pharmaceuticals, so they have to be something that you take by mouth or maybe something that is injected. I only looked at monotherapies, so it couldn't be a treatment that combines two or more different drugs. And also, it had to be in the scientific literature. So I didn't discuss all the things that are being tried clinically, and there's a lot of those, and those may be interesting, but for me to discuss it, it has to have a publication. So it has to be in, in the scientific record and be in a clinical trial. So those are the four restrictions. So that's why if you see something that you think, or, or if you don't see something in the list that you thought should be in there, it's for one of those reasons why it's probably not in the list. It's possible I missed something, but I think I did a pretty good job of capturing the uh, scientific record of ME-CFS treatments. So I'm going to show that list one additional caveat, and that is this is not a wish list and it's not a shopping list. The majority of these treatments have very little scientific data supporting their use in ME-CFS, and in fact some of them have been shown basically not to work at all. So just because you see it in this list, it doesn't mean it's something that you need to go out and try. I think basically all of these need more research, that we need more data before we can suggest that these are something you should try. And I'll maybe point out a couple of exceptions that have a growing amount of information supporting them. But, but again, the big caveat here is this is just a list of the things that people have tried for ME-CFS. So you can see here some of the medications that have been trialed for ME-CFS. And I'm going to go through these by category rather than talking about each agent by name. So the first category you see up there are the psychostimulants. And these are drugs that basically wake up the nervous system. So the idea behind these are pretty simple. It's if someone looks really tired, if they're fatigued, a stimulant may give them more energy to get through the day. So these are the same types of medications that might be tried for attention deficit disorder or maybe narcolepsy. And they basically kind of rev up the brain and keep you awake. So several of these are based on amphetamines. Uh, methylphenidate is very similar to amphetamines. Modafinil works a little bit differently, but these are all things that have been tried for MECFS. The next category are the antidepressants. Some individuals may benefit from having their levels of serotonin or dopamine or norepinephrine boosted, especially if they're also suffering from symptoms of depression. So antidepressants are oftentimes tried, and there's a lot uh, that have been tried for ME-CFS, much more than you see in this list here. So that's another class that's tried for ME-CFS. The next category are the antivirals, like valgenciclovir and famciclovir. A lot of research is being done on these, I think, even right now, and it makes a lot of sense that if someone has an active viral infection or maybe some kind of hidden latent viral infection that pops up from time to time, using an antiviral may be especially helpful in those cases. So those are ones that a lot of people are interested in. The next category are the immune modulators, and these are drugs that suppress the immune system. Some of them like the first two, which are, are corticosteroids, will suppress the immune system pretty globally. 
Others are more specific and more targeted. Now you see here I have a couple of medications in green. That's rintotolamod and rituximab. These are both immunosuppressives, but they're pretty specific. And I have them in green because reading the scientific literature, to me it looks like they have more data behind them than is typically seen. That doesn't necessarily mean they're better than all the rest of the medications, but they've gone through more trials and those trials tended to have more people in them. Still need to see a lot more information on these, but I do think it's interesting that two of the medications that have gotten further along this process of scientific testing and clinical trials, both are immune modulators, and that fits in with my hypothesis of what causes a lot of cases of ME-CFS. So these are used for rheumatic and autoimmune disorders where you need to suppress the immune system because it's hyperactive. So let's go on to the next page. And the next category are kind of a, a collection of metabolic and, and cell energy type of supplements. So these tend to be supplements or nutrients. And the idea here is the mechanics of the cells and how energy is produced and how energy is used, one of those processes have broken down. And so these treatments will give additional building blocks for those processes and try to get the mechanics of cell production and metabolic processes working correctly again. And there's a lot of different approaches to that that you'll see. Next category is the neurotransmitters. These are not necessarily antidepressants. They work on different types of neurotransmitters, and these, are, these include a lot of different types of treatments. So a few of those have been tried. I haven't seen really compelling evidence that they're highly effective in the majority of people with MECFS, but they probably could be studied further, and there may be some neurotransmitter-based drugs that can help some people with MECFS. In the final category I discussed were the supplements, which is also a very broad category. You see things like multivitamins and coenzyme Q10. The idea here is if you're low in B vitamins or vitamin D, if, you, if you're not getting the proper nutrients for your cells, then fatigue is something you can expect to feel. And so one of the first things that people may try is to make sure that they're not having a deficiency in, in a critical nutrient or a critical vitamin that their cells need or their neurons specifically need that you need to have energy and to think clearly and so a lot of these have been tried and i think there's trials ongoing uh, these continue to be studied quite a bit so those are the major classes of drugs that are in the scientific literature for MECFS. These are publications, so I typically saw those in PubMed. This next page, I wanted to also tell you what's being tested right now. And to do that, I looked at clinicaltrials.gov because any serious clinical trial director should register their trial in advance with clinicaltrials.gov. That way, they post their treatment and they post their hypothesis. and. I don't know if everyone does this, but they're supposed to. And so if there's an active ongoing trial for MECFS, we should be able to find it here. Now, what was surprising to me is there was basically nothing currently enrolling for MECFS. All these in black that you see, these are things that were completed or they were terminated pretty recently. You can see that some of them were terminated because people got worse. Some of them, we don't know what happened, just the study stopped. We, we may assume that maybe the drug wasn't working, so they just stopped it. There were a few, which you see in bold, which are very recent. For most of those, I, I don't have any results. The results are not available. I haven't seen a publication. They're considered active, but they're not recruiting, so we don't really know what's happening with those. Hopefully, we'll hear something pretty soon, maybe at an upcoming MECFS um, conference. Maybe we'll, we'll see something in the published literature. So not much going on there. At the very bottom, you see one medication in green. That is the only current recruiting MECFS trial I could find on clinicaltrials.gov, and that is in the Netherlands. It's not even a U.S.-based trial. So what that means is if you're in the United States, 
I couldn't find any actively enrolling ME-CFS trials. Now that trial is for sodium oxabate, which we discussed last week in the Q&A session. And that's the idea that if you take sodium oxabate, it'll help you go to sleep at night, you'll get better sleep, and then you'll be more rested the next day. If, if the person's problem is they're not getting proper sleep, this may help them. Now there's some safety concerns with sodium oxabate, uh, especially if it's being combined with alcohol and other drugs, but it is an interesting and, and a pretty logical approach. But again, it's not being trialed in the United States. So there's not much going on. And this, I think, as I discussed with the CDC, is, is a huge problem. We should have 15 clinical trials going on at any given time to prioritize treatments for ME-CFS. And it's disappointing that's not the case. And I, I hope and I do trust that that's changing pretty quickly. Now we're in the final processes uh, or final process of registering a uh, low-dose naltrexone for ME-CFS trial. And so you will see that up there. So probably within a week or two, there will be at least two actively recruiting trials for ME-CFS. And uh, you can see the details on that. Last thing, uh, just about a minute left. There are a lot of avenues that you can hear about new trials. So of course, we'll talk about exciting stuff as the information comes out, but there are also online blogs, science blogs, health blogs, online communities, where if something works for MECFS, you'll hear about it pretty quickly. But if you want to keep an eye out yourself, I recommend looking at pubmed.gov, clinicaltrials.gov, projectreporter.nih.gov. These are all government sites where you can look at either publications, published clinical trials, or, or current grants to see if there's anything happening close to you. Be careful with your search terms. You may have to use different search terms because some people still use chronic fatigue syndrome, systemic exertion intolerance disease, a lot of terms that are synonymous so you may have to type in multiple different ones to find all the trials. And then at the very bottom, there was a 2016 paper that came out that I think did a pretty good job at covering most of the medications that have been studied by scientists for MECFS recently. So you may want to take a look at that one. So that's the current state. Uh, again, I didn't want to rehash that talk I gave a little while ago. I just wanted to post those medications. I do hope that over the next few years that list grows and we start to figure out which one of these or which new medications we need to prioritize, uh, perhaps for FDA approval and get something on the market for people to take uh, with MECFS.